saying that this is the most hotly anticipated musical of the year is an understatement. Literally, if you go and check to book this musical right now, you'll probably see that it's sold out for the next six or eight weeks, which honestly, it's unheard of. I haven't really seen that being a case probably since Tom Holland's Romeo and Juliet. But does it really live up to the hype? Let's rewind. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. I'm Christina and I'm on a mission to see 52 shows in the West End. And this is a channel where I share my reviews, my tips and everything in between. So if you like the sound of it, make sure to subscribe. So The Devil Wears Prada is obviously based on the iconic movie of the same name, which was released in 2006. And the movie is based on a novel, which was released in 2003. If you don't know the story, it follows Andy, who is a girl next door and she applies for the fashion magazine Runway to be an assistant to Miranda Presley, who is the most important person in that magazine. I'm sure that most people have seen The Devil Wears Prada and if you haven't, go and check it out because it is an iconic movie with Anne Hathaway and Meryl Streep. Obviously the story has the narrative of Andy starting as a girl next door, not having a clue about Miranda, about Runway, about fashion world and then she progresses slowly to like it and enjoy it and being good at it and having Miranda's approval really made her feel like she is seen and heard and that there is the world that she kind of belongs in but then towards the end of the story she kind of changes her mind and decides that she wants to follow her dreams that are slightly different to what Runway offers. The musical does not deviate from this story at all. I think it really tries to follow it as truthfully as possible even with some iconic scenes that are happening in Miranda's office and the also outfits that Andy is wearing etc. They're all very much kind of replica from the movie. So I think for people who really resonate with the movie this will be something that they will find familiar and maybe enjoy. For those people who maybe expected a new take on it this might be a disappointment but I think that there is plenty of other good things that can keep you interested in this musical. What is very special about this musical is the team of creatives that it has assembled. Not only that it has this existing story that has been loved by millions of people around the world but now it combines that with music by Elton John, direction and choreography by Jerry Mitchell who is the mastermind behind Kinky Boots and Illegally Blonde which is one of my favorite musicals and lyrics by Tony Award winner Shayna Taub and Mark Sonnenblick. It is also worth saying that Kate Weatherbeck who is the mastermind behind the original novel and the story has also been involved in the creation of the musical. So is this the world premiere of The Devil Wears Prada musical and the response is no. Actually in 2022 this musical opened in Chicago first and had its own run there and from there it actually had a small run in Plymouth as well before opening at the Dominion Theatre where it's now set to perform well into 2025. The music in this musical is very much pop as you can expect if it's written by Sir Elton John. It has a few signature Elton John ballads that are the moments that characters feel very grounded and very reflective and pensive and in that position of thinking about life and things that surround them and what is the right decision for them or just aspirational moments and I think that is where you can feel the most that that pop sound and beautiful keys playing in the background and just the progressions of the harmonies and the melodies are very very close to what Elton John normally writes. I think you can really hear his sound through those. But on the flip side there are quite a few very unique numbers that are quite different. As Elton John specifies in the program he said that he really wanted to create a modern musical and I do think that this musical is very modern in more than one ways. But when we're talking about music there are a few of really almost like unexpected melodic solutions that happen in a musical which really suit this musical because ultimately this is a musical about fashion, about runways, about that kind of fashion week vibe that it normally is associated with more electronic music or just the music with a little bit more rhythm that is kind of more monotone compared to like usual jazz hands musical theater performances and there are plenty of those so like it really lends this musical to be a musical for modern audiences. You'd be pleased to know that there is a song called The Devil Wears Prada which is second to last song of the first act. Songs such as Miranda Girl were pretty fun. House of Miranda is also the iconic number that is just establishing the importance of Miranda's character. What's Right For Me it is the last song of the show and it was really interesting because I feel that in most western musicals you get that last song where all the cast comes together and they all sing but in this instance it is actually ending with Andy.
Lindsay singing her song and then the final bows happen. So that was really, really interesting to see. There are quite a few belting numbers performed by Andy and Emily and both of these were spectacular, but I'm going to talk about cast in a moment. And also Miranda has quite a few of those really impressive entrances and songs and just generally the numbers that really put her character in that perspective of being such an icon that she is. So from that perspective, there are quite a few numbers that people will love and add to their playlist and they will become musical theater classics. And now it's time to talk about the cast. And this is the musical that really requires some amazing leads to deliver it. Because as mentioned, there are some songs that are really, really hard to sing. And there is a lot of choreography and there is a lot happening on stage at a lot of times. So when it comes to cast, it is numerous, but also the leads get their time to shine. I have never seen a cast that is as beautiful as this one. Honestly, they all look like models and there is a reason for it. It is about a fashion magazine. It is about runway. So at some points they are all, and I'm talking about ensemble members, walking around as they're like on a fashion show and they're wearing these amazing costumes. And even when they're in the office, they all look tiptoe dressed up in like fashionable things. But let's talk about the leads. So the biggest name on this cast is Vanessa Williams, who is someone that you you might know from Ugly Betty or Desperate Housewives. She is an established screen and theater actor and she is someone who can definitely handle the role of Miranda Presley on stage and she did do that. Her amazing poise and presence and stance and this is all helped by these amazing costumes that she's wearing but I think she's just really living and breathing this role. She's very kind of poker face, not showing a lot of emotion and that really comes across so well. Her singing numbers are really good. Her presence on stage is all eyes on her and I know that there is a lot to do with the light, with the costume, the choreographies and everything but I think she handles it really well and when it comes to the role of Miranda Presley it is really hard to cast someone for this because there are Meryl Streep's shoes to fill. Everyone has this idea of how Miranda Presley should look like and it's such an iconic character in the movie so it's really hard to bring it on stage expect this person to really fill those shoes but Vanessa Williams is that person. This is not the only impressive performance in the musical. I have to talk about Georgie Buckland who is Andy in the musical and this is her West End debut. When I read that in the program I could not believe that that's the case because she is owning that stage with the role of Andy there's like such a big evolution of the character from the beginning to the end it's like a kind of full circle moment and you can really see that this character has changed from that first time that she entered Miranda's office to the last time where she's actually deciding that that's not the life and the world that she wants to be part of and seeing Georgie so skillfully portraying this and being so comfortable in this role blew my mind honestly she was spectacular and she has the voice super powerful voice she belted those songs out. She was so present and she was great. So I really so impressed by her, if you can't tell. But also another person that maybe even like impressed me more than Vanessa and Georgie is Amy de Bartolomeo, who is in the role of Emily. And she is so good. The show opens with her coming onto the stage, her phone is ringing and she's kind of like having this like very interesting moment with the audience where she's like, did you take a picture with this sign? Now take a picture with me. And it's like, okay, okay, no more phones. And almost like she's the person delivering that announcement, but she does it in character and she does it so well. And he sets the tone of the show and of her character so well, just introducing us in the story from the get go. And throughout the whole show, her performance and her character was so clearly defined and she she was in it spectacular because she has a lot of those humorous elements. I think both Miranda and Andy are just the way that they are, but like Emily is where these really funny caricature stories come to life and she is the embodiment of this kind of Miranda girl that they're singing about. And she's so good and genuine at it that I really, really loved her performance and probably out of all people, I think that she's the one who really stood out for me. Matt Henry is in the role of Nigel and he was a really lovely 
lovely presence, kind of like almost like a brother or like a father figure for Andy and such a good friend to Miranda. And I think this has really come across in his portrayal of Nigel. What really helped the cast stand out is the amazing costumes. And the costumes in The Devil Wears Prada needed to be top notch for them to really deliver the story of the fashion magazine, the fashion world, and it needed to be glamorous and really kind of put together. And I think that they've done a good job with this. I would say that there are definitely numbers where the costumes are maybe better than the others. When they're organizing the ball and when they're having this kind of party and the costumes during that time, and it looked amazing. It genuinely felt like very, very special. And then towards the end, there's also the runway show. And then you can see the ensemble members kind of like walking around like they're on a runway with these like beautiful gowns and everything. So it's really elaborate, like everything from like office wear that is looking like you are in Miranda Presley's office to the fashion show runway. I think the costumes really delivered on their task of being that kind of bougie fashion or just like really having a lot of style and Miranda's costumes are fabulous. And then something that really made this show stand out and made it really modern is the lighting. From the very beginning when you enter into the auditorium you have the Devil Wears Prada sign which is kind of like neon lights and it already looks very modern but then the moment that that sign started going up and you could see like New York skyline in the background and the silhouettes of the ensemble members as the opening scene starts I literally had goosebumps and I haven't felt that in a long time when it comes to that like opening number it was literally straight in your face but then with a lot of kind of style and it was all like red and black and it just looked really really good and the lighting throughout pays attention to details to such extent that it almost feels that the lighting is like the pulsating heartbeat of the show and as mentioned there are some elements where it looks like they're on runway or that ensemble members are in the stores and that the lights are kind of put on them in those kind of like spots so they really leaned into that aspect of production to elevate it and to make it as modern as possible and then the ball look amazing with this like beautiful staircase and then the runway as well there were a lot of those elements that literally resemble like fashion shows or Met Gala and things like that. Which brings me to the set design and I'm happy to say that the set design really delivered. Not only this first opening number that I just talked about but I think throughout the set design didn't feel cluttered at no point but it was also glamorous when it needed to be or a little bit more tight when it needed to be. So for example when they're in Andy's apartment it is literally kind of like kitchen which represents Andy's boyfriend and the bed which is kind of like their relationship and there was like really really small then when you had Miranda's office they're kind of like just like three desks so it's not like there are like tons of changes that are happening but in the background you can see beautiful like New York skyline and that kind of changes when they go to Paris so these are like all beautiful ways in which the set was like really cleverly designed so it allows a lot of space for dancing and choreography but at the same time it adds a lot of context I think one of the most memorable set scenes is the amazing wardrobe scene when Andy and Nigel walk into the wardrobe so she can pick her outfit and I think that is the scene where everyone is going to be like oh my god I wish I had like this wardrobe it looks amazing it's like literally a wall of clothes and it is very iconic and it is something that I think is going to be definitely the image that will be shared around quite a lot also the staircase for the ball and the costumes that are delivered at that point it just looked spectacular so I think when it comes to set design and lighting this show really delivered to my expectations I think it actually it exceeded them so what do you think is my final verdict when it comes to Devil Wears Prada. Well, as you can tell from all these points that I've talked about, I really loved it. And I was a bit hesitant when it comes to this musical just because I know that sometimes these adaptations don't work out and they're not as great as you would think. Maybe there just isn't enough that, that the musical delivers in terms of the continuation of the story or elevating the story. It very much follows exactly the movie, but it's a good movie to musical adaptation. Like the set is there, the costumes are there, there are like some really good numbers, the music is fun, there are a lot of opportunities for the leads to really showcase their vocal technical abilities, the cast also has a lot of room to share like what they're capable of. So like overall it's it's an amazing musical and it's well put together and you can tell that it has gone through iterations to get to the point now where it is because it's a solid musical and I can see that it's going to have a pretty solid run and for any fan of this movie, for anyone visiting London, this is definitely going to be on the top of the list for people to see. So my recommendation is to go and check out this musical as soon as you can. I don't think you're going to regret it. If you like this movie, then you are going to be really, really impressed.
Best Buy it. It is definitely one of my favorite watches of this year. If you're looking for ways to secure best deals in the West, then check out this video where I'm talking about my favorite ways to secure cheap tickets.